Pelleggi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Hi, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at a project that uh, is actually near and dear to my heart. This is my personal computer. This machine is a few years old now. Um, it started off as upgrades to an older machine. That machine was uh, not really the best for what I wanted it to be, so I had to upgrade it. And what you're looking at here is that upgrade. This is actually the fourth to fifth iteration of this actual machine. Of course, that's the good part about building your own computer. You can upgrade it quite uh, a, a lot more than you can with a uh, off-the-shelf computer, as far as like your memory, your processors go, um, what kind of stuff it comes with stock that you might not get with a off-the-shelf computer. Uh, I've been a Dell fan my whole life. I've never really bought like HPs or anything like that, but Dells all the way. And uh, I've loved them, but ever since I've started building my own computers, that's the way to go. They're they're much better buy in the long run. You may spend a little more money, let's say, than, you know, getting it off the shelf because you have to buy all the parts and then you have to get the operating system. Whereas when you buy it off the shelf, it's all ready to go. Plus, you don't have the support. But the good thing is, is all the parts in here have their individual warranties. So, for example, the hard drive that's in here ended up crapping out me at one point, and luckily I had a backup. But I... Uh, was able to send out for a replacement and within a week I had another drive which again has its own warranty on it you can't you can't beat that um, normally if you had an off-the-shelf computer and you had something go wrong you'd have to send the whole computer out for them to fix it and who wants to be out without their computer I was still able to use the machine because the drive is only a data drive so I'm, I'm fortunate but you know always keep a backup I can't stress that enough situations I've had it happen to me before but anyway so let's take a look at what we got here this is an ape via XQ boy micro ATX case it came with the window on the side of it I have some modifications that I've done to it which you'll see once they get opened up inside here um, I can tell you that the LEDs for the power and the hard drive lights were replaced by me. There's a really bright blue and a really bright orange here. Uh, it came with the blue light, but it was kind of just a diffused LED. It wasn't as bright and noticeable. This one is very bright because the whole side of the case over here lights up blue. Um, I wanted it to match. and You know, this is actually under my desk in a completely separate room from my bedroom so the blue lights don't bother me. I know there's a lot of people that look at it and go, whoa, that's kind of crazy. I wouldn't want that thing, you know, on my desk. And I hear all these different things, and I, it's under my desk. I don't really mind it. Plus, it's kind of neat, and I'm a geek. But I digress. So on the front here, there are two USB ports. We have a mic input. We have a audio output as like a micro. Uh, I'm sorry, as a headphone jack. There's a FireWire port. You also have a three-port fan controller. I have this is uh, actually from Silverstone. This is set up with the front fan, the side fan, and the two rear fans all on separate switches. There are no um, power switches, so if they're in a low position, they're still spinning. Some of these have switches where you can shut them off. I don't like that idea because I want the fans to spin no matter what because these do get hot. Uh, right above it, we have a... A card slot with multiple slots on here plus an additional USB port this is great for if you want to plug in like thumb drives and you have like your two ports taken from game controllers or something plus as obvious here I have two DVD RWs and the only reason why I have two is well because I had an extra one lying around and why not it's, they do work at the same time I have recorded two DVDs at once um, to actually two separate DVDs not like a copy of each other the thing to note about these two drivers, they're actually IDE drives, and one of the reasons why I picked this particular motherboard and this actual whole computer was because I wanted to utilize as much parts as I had from my old machine, and I don't have to buy SATA drives. Um, and, you know, there's actually gives you a good flexibility because with IDE drives, you don't really need super speed. You don't need the SATA input. This actually has, I believe, six SATA inputs plus the... Uh, IDE channel here which you can hook up hard drives or whatever you want 
So having the master slave configuration on that IDE, I think it even has two IDEs plus the floppy drive port on this motherboard, a thing you, you're not going to see anymore. Well, that's it for the front. The side over here, you can see there's that big 120mm uh, fan and the nice window. One of the things I did was is I, I stripped all the paint off of this and I gave it my own flat pack black finish and actually it had a um, sprayed in here like the relieved areas with a glossy black first and then when I did all the sanding I covered this up and then I hit it with the flat black and then I was able to get the shiny inside here like this glossy look which is kind of neat. It was kind of an accidental thing. And then in the back here, again, this was all painted. This was stock silver. This is the 550-watt power supply that came with the case. I bought the two of them together, empty. I replaced the fan in here with a Thermaltake 120-millimeter blue LED fan to match the rest of the case fans. And that's actually being controlled off of the motherboard. So that's the speed-sensitive fan. Here's a Ultra Firewire card. This is a PCI card. There's two ports in the back, and this is also hooked up to the port in the front of the computer. We have here a Sound Blaster Recon 3D 7.1 channel THX certified sound card. And I have this hooked up to a Logitech THX 5.1 sound system in the room. Um, I do use the direct channels on this so I have three gold plated uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks going from this to the computer uh, or receiver on my desk and I don't use the optical but it's nice that it has an input this down here is actually a plate for the onboard audio which I don't use anymore but I didn't have a blank to stick back in here so I just left it we have a EVGA 9800 GT kind of old school PCIe uh, video card and by the way the sound blaster is also PCIe this is again the video card I upgraded my old Dell computer with that had a 6800 in it and that got the 9800 which was great at the time and it still does what I needed to do um, I'm, I'm, I do play games but I'm not a high-end gamer I don't have one of these new you know ultra computers I mean, this is plenty fast for me, but now looking at it and doing this video editing and stuff, I realize putting a Generation 1 i7 processor in this would be great. However, looking at the new motherboards that are out there, I may just upgrade the motherboard and CPU in this thing and give it Generation 4 i7 or something. Some of the newer ones are like 4 gigahertz, and this one's only 3.2 gigahertz, and it's an i3. So that would be a huge, huge improvement. Plus, it'd make my video editing a lot better. And, uh, well, this machine was built for, like I said, everyday use, for, you know, minimum, you know, gaming, moderate gaming, I'd say. I do play, like, Minecraft and Unreal Tournament and things like that. It all works really well. But I also used to do a lot of video, uh, I'm sorry, I used to do a lot of audio editing. I used to uh, actually be a DJ. And the same hardware here, plus... An, audio rack that I sold and had a bunch of stuff in it like a Tascam um, interface, a USB interface for this. You know, that worked well and actually used the um, audio, the external audio and that USB rack to process all the stuff from uh, FL Studio through an ASIO connection in inside the computer and, you know, after I would render it, of course, I could play it back through the onboard or the sound card either way I'd want. Um, but now I don't have that rack. Uh, I'm into other things now. So this is just an everyday machine. It can handle all the stuff I give it. Um, it does have onboard video, but I opted for my external card here. Um, that's about it for the outside. We'll just bring it around over here. and I have these nice nifty th thumb screws, which makes getting in and out of this thing really easy. I did paint the inside of the case. This was again all silver and I figured well with the big window on the side of it and all these fans 
lighten up the case, you would, you would want to see the black inside. It just looks a lot nicer. I'm just going to zoom in here just a little bit. What we have here is a Kingston Hyper X 120 gigabyte SSD. This is the main drive for the computer. So Windows installed on that. It boots right to that. The SSD is the fastest thing by far in this machine as far as a boot device is concerned. So that's like where Windows is. That's where any fast programs. I have the a program files folder on that drive. But by default, the Western Digital Caviar Black one terabyte drive below it is where I store all the data. So the my documents folder is on there, the pictures, you know, that whole file structure lives on that by default. So as soon as I save something, it goes right to that other drive. I don't, uh, that way I minimize the amount of writes to the hard drive, uh, the solid state drive. But also, I don't have that much room on it. It's only 120 gigabyte. You know, those things aren't that cheap. When I bought that, they were not not that new on the market, but they were just at that affordable range where I could justify getting a 120 gigabyte hard drive. It wasn't terribly expensive. Now you can get a, like a 256 for the price I paid for that 120. That's fine though. I have, you know, more than half that drive full, uh, uh, empty. So it, it works well for me. I don't need any more than that. And the the one terabyte drive, same thing with that. It's little little more than half of it is is free space. So that's plenty plenty good. And plus, I have a server in the room that has its own large hard drive in it. The majority of the stuff I don't need to look at every day is stored on that. You know, I just have movies and, and music on this whatever games I use having that you know caviar black hard drive that's a that's a pretty fast hard drive uh, I did actually have that as the main boot drive at one point but there's a night and day difference between the SSD and that, that hard drive plus having the SSD there's a lot of tweaks I have within Windows uh, for example when you boot the computer up it doesn't actually come up with the Windows splash screen it kind of just loads in the background and then it just gives you your desktop that shaves off a couple seconds. Also, I turned off things like automatic uh, defragging and things. You don't want the SSD to do that. That can handle it on its own. Um, there's a thing about writing too much to an SSD that after a certain time you can't write to it anymore, and that's when you have to replace it. But you can always read. So you'll you'll never have it fail on you per se. You'll always be able to get your data off of it. But there's a point when you won't be able to write to it. And you want to minimize the amount of times you, you write to that hard drive. So with Windows, I have a lot of things pawned off to other drives. Uh, even, well, the next piece of information, the memory here, there's 16 gigabytes of memory there, which is more than I need. So what I did was is took four gigabytes of it and have it set up as a RAM disk, which basically means that four gigabytes, Windows sees it just like it's a hard drive or a thumb drive. But it is crazy fast. So I have my Chrome browsing information and the Chrome browser itself installed on that RAM disk. Every time you load up the computer, there's a 4 gigabyte file on the SSD that gets loaded into RAM. The rest of the RAM, Windows sees just like RAM. Um, the other stuff is reserved, like I said, it's a 4 gigabyte RAM disk. Then it automatically, whatever is in that 4 gig, file which would be my browsing history after I shut the computer off that gets loaded up into memory into that drive so it's just like plugging in a drive in the front of your computer you don't know any different but it look, makes my web page just load really really quickly plus if I want to do you know any kind of editing or something like that and I want to use that as a swap file memory is like unbelievably faster I actually have the numbers I did a hard drive test I got 3,273.5 mil uh, megabytes per second transfer rate on that memory as opposed to 140 megabytes per second on the SSD and 61 megabytes uh, per second on the hard drive that's in there, that Western Digital. So, you know, comparing the hard drive to the SSD, you know, it's a little more than double the speed, but Comparing that to the memory, the memory is off the charts. Now the only thing is, is you only have so much memory. If I could put 32 gigabytes in this machine, 
I could take 16 of it easily and dedicate it to that RAM disk. But alas, I can only go up to 16 gigs in this. I am at my limit. Um, that's actually how much the processor will handle. So speaking of the processor, this is a Generation 1 Core i3 550 running at 3.2 gigahertz. Um, I can put an i3, an i5, or an i7 in this machine. This is the socket 1156, I believe. There was the 1155 and 1156. I think this is the 1156. The 1155 is the newer. Then there was also the 1366 socket, which was the Core i7s. This is not that board. Um, I have looked at it. I can go to a Core i7-880 or the 870. That's a, Right now, it's about a $160 upgrade. Um, at 160 bucks. I don't know. I think I may just, you know, bite the bullet and save up some money and get a new motherboard and processor. Keep the same RAM in this and the hard drive and SSD. For now, I'll just keep the video card until I get the money to get a better one. That serves my purposes. Um, you'll also see that there's a Creative Labs card there. I mentioned that before. That's also hooked up to the front audio, which is great. Um, I, I'd also use that in the, in the newer build. Um, I do like to, to keep the case if that's possible. So I'd have to go with a micro ATX motherboard as well. However, some of these kits I'm looking at, I see that they come with the full ATX case in the motherboard for not much more money than you can just get the two pieces alone. So my thought process is, is maybe I'll do that and then turn this into my server. Um, having the Core i3 with well, I have I have 8 gigs originally for this, so putting the 8 gigs originally with this processor, taking this video card out, putting in my hard drives into this thing, I have a 10,000 RPM Western Digital, uh, I think it's a 300 gigabyte drive that I use on the main drive for the server, and then a 1 terabyte data drive, so I would throw the two of those in this thing, and I think it would work really well for a server, it'd be better than what I'm running right now. Um, which is just you know an old Dell machine on the desk, just to just to make you know just to make do for me. Um, this is pretty much all I have to talk about this computer. There's nothing really terribly interesting about it, uh, other than the little modifications like I said that I did. The case was like I said spray painted. I rounded out the edges with a sander to kind of give it that worn out look. It makes it look a little distressed and it's kind of random and the black interior is kind of nice so I guess there's just well really one thing left to do is just to uh, get this put back together and plug it in and show you what it looks like and I guess um, I guess I could turn the camera around and hook it up to my monitor and show you how quickly it boots up for an older machine this is going to be upgraded to Windows 10 I'm pretty sure there's a couple like I said, there's a few things I'm tossing around. One of them I'd like to do is, is actually back up the two hard drives in here and give it a nice, fresh, clean install of Windows and just put the software that I'm using right now for the video editing, and that's pretty much it, and just leave it like that. And then as I need it for other things, I can obviously just reinstall those things. But I would put the data that I, ha I need on this. Um, I do have room in my server for all of it, but... I'd rather keep certain things that I need quick on this machine rather than have to stream it through my entire network until I can get this machine into the server position where I'm going to get a, a speed increase, I could, I could say, on my, my uh, throughput here. I don't want to put an over overbearing on my server. One of the things that um, I can do with the server if it's a little better for machine what I'm using is stream video through the internet. And that's great if I want to watch something when I'm out and about from, you know, my home computer. Plus, uh, I can also manage all my computers from the server, from a remote location. So if I want to do Windows updates or shut them down or whatever I want to do, I can do that. That's really great. But let me cut the camera here. We'll put the case on. I'll plug a power cord into it, and we'll see what it looks like. All right, we got the power plug plugged in. However, the switch is off on the power supply. So I'm gonna flip that switch on and you're gonna see the power LED light up. 
And this is just a standby, let you know there's AC power hooked to it. However, it's not turned on right now. As soon as you kick it over, you'll hear it turns on, you'll see there's indicators. I haven't changed these out yet. I had an older drive here and I did the blue LED conversion to it and I just haven't had a chance to do these drives yet. And I'd like to take this apart too, see if I can change this too to match, but minor things. And here's what it looks like. And if you, you may not be able to pick it up because I do have another fan running in the room, but I want these things at full speed over here. I do like to run these at full speed when I'm doing, you know, intensive stuff. Elsewise, I run them at a lower speed because they're, you know, not the loudest things, but they're not the quietest either. Uh, I'm going to shut some lights off here so you can see what these things look like. Bear with me, I have a lot of lights. One more. And then there's the camera light. Let's see if I can. So the most obvious fan you can see is the one on the side of the computer, but there is also one in the front. It's kind of off-centered from the hole, so you can't really see it, but it is down here, and the LED light for the power is really, really bright. I mean, I can see this from across the room. In fact, this light shines against the wall, and when it's dark and the computer's running overnight, I can see that wall lit up in blue from the other side of the house I live in. So it's that one singular blue LED being behind this little um, light pipe over here makes it really, really bright. Uh, yeah, you can also see in the back here, there's the two, these are 80 millimeter case fans. And then if I tilt it back a little bit, you could see the blue light in the top. That's the fan in the power supply. There it is up there glowing. And there's also a flashing blue LED on the board over here. This indicates um, what phase the power is going to the processor or something like that. When you see it blinking, it's like both cores are working. Or I, I don't really remember what that blue light does, but it's cool watching it blinking under my desk. Especially, like I said, when I'm doing some heavy processing or something, that little thing blinks like crazy under there. What if I lower these fans back down? It's pretty quiet. And like I said, they're all speed sensitive fans, even the one in the power supply. So that's that's really nice. One of the things I was thinking of doing in the past, which again I may or may not do, is actually add more blue lights in the case shining onto the components. I mean, it just has a, a lit blue effect, but you would see that a lot nicer if there was actually stuff, like, maybe on the door shining into the case. Just some, like, point lighting or, hell, maybe even throw a, a strip of, uh, like, a cold cathode, like a blue cold cathode tube in this thing or something. I don't know. I like the LED color. Let's see if I can show you the fan. Yeah, there's the front fan. So it's pretty cool. I'm very happy with the build. It's um, been a very reliable computer. It, I, I can honestly say I don't ever remember getting the blue screen to death on it. It's um, it's pretty impressive sometimes how these machines are um, efficiency-wise. And to think this is uh, eh, about five years old, maybe now, could be. So I've seen the day code of. 2010 in there so this has to be five years old by now at least but by that standard you know it's it's not really it's not obsolete you can get faster nowadays obviously but uh, for what this machine does for me it's perfect I, I do you know plan on upgrading soon though because uh, I like to stay kind of ahead of it even though I'm not really ahead of it as long as I could buy something and the minimum specs are below what this has in it, I'm good to go. 
I know there's games out there I've looked at where you you have to have a fifteen hundred dollar machine to run it, and I'm like, ah, I guess I'm not playing that game, and I'm good. I'm good with that. I, I don't really need to, you know. I, I do have enough hobbies, so I don't need to, you know, be a video game enthusiast again. But well, I guess that's really all I have for this video. Um, I just wanted to go over this machine and point out some of the things I did with it, and. Just give you a sneak peek of the kind of stuff I like to do with these computers. Oh. Yes, I did want to do something else. Let me shut this computer down and get it hooked up to a monitor and we'll time the start time on it. Alright, welcome back. As you can see, we have two monitors hooked up to this computer. Uh, the larger monitor is my main screen. The secondary monitor I use for putting web pages on or, or whatnot. Neither one of them is 1080p, but alas, you know, content still does look great on them. But anyway, I'm going to go hit the power button on this computer over here, and we're going to see how quick this thing takes to boot up. And I'm pushing the button now. So right now, all the LED lights just came lighting up. The CD-ROMs are spinning up, the hard drive spinning up, and we should see the logo come up for the BIOS in just about now and uh, this is a regular BIOS it's not one of those new UEFI systems but this is all you'll see the BIOS um, none of the text will come up it's gonna go right to a bunch of dots at the top of the screen right about now there they go and this is in lieu of the Windows logo and the next thing we should get is my logo and my login there's the mouse And then I'm going to put my password in. And there we go. I mean, that's pretty quick in my opinion. This machine's had software loaded and uninstalled and been surfed online for days and nights. And uh, I mean, it's put through all the paces of a regular computer. As you can see, I'm, I, I maintain it very well, and I have a lot of stuff coming up here. Uh, you get control of the computer pretty quickly. I, I have a pet peeve when you sit down to a machine after it's you know come from a cold boot and it takes like minutes for it to load up, or you know it's one of those things you hit the power button and you go make a cup of coffee. When you come back, it's uh, still not quite up yet. I, I hate that. Um, I use a, a couple different programs to do that this thing goes through daily scans and I'm always checking stuff on it and doing housekeeping on it and just trying to maintain it because I want the quickest experience I can get but you know that's it you can see my simple desktop um, if you're wondering what those red flashing lights in the bottom right of the screen is down there off camera off the corner it's uh that's actually an LED um, cube that's being run by an Arduino with a kit which I'll have a future video on but as far as uh, this video is concerned that's pretty much all there is to it you know like I said I just wanted to show you the contents of the inside of my machine give you an idea how quick it boots up I could go into some of the programs I have on here and do all that but that's all future video stuff we'll do some benchmarking and things like that but for now you can get to see you know how quick it is and you know some of the custom stuff I've done to it if you like what you see and you want to see more please subscribe don't forget to leave some comments at the bottom I will have no problem writing back to you if you have any questions and don't forget to click the like button till next time